Hello everyone, this is Ray LaHood, Secretary of Transportation. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of On The Go. We've got some great topics to cover today, so let's get to the first question. John writes, why do you focus so much on light rail commuter transit when our roads are crumbling beneath our tires? Well, we do focus on all forms of transportation, uh, light rail, uh, has certainly been one, but if you look at the $48 billion that we received in the economic recovery plan, over the last um, two and a half years, we spent $48 billion, of which $28 billion went to roads and bridges. We have a very, very strong highway program. It's a program that makes sure that roads and bridges are in state of good repair, that roads and bridges are in the kind of condition that people want to drive on. But at DOT, uh, we, we focus on many different forms of transportation, roads and bridges, light rail, streetcars, buses, and then of course uh, other forms of transportation too. But um, I think our focus and attention has uh, always been with emphasis on our highways and making sure they're in a state of good repair. But we know that people want choices. We know that people want to ride a bus or a metro system or a light rail or a streetcar. And uh, so we can't just put all of our eggs, all of our resources into one area. And I think if you look across the way that we've spent money across the board, you'll find that uh, we've been pretty fair in our distribution of money. Next question, Boris asks, how can we help metropolitan planning organizations consider common interests that cross state lines like our largest metro transit systems often do. We've tried to encourage metropolitan planning organizations to make sure that all the stakeholders are at the table, to make sure that every form of transportation is at the table, to make sure that everything is considered, uh, not just one form of transportation. And I think around the country, as planning has taken place, I think most uh, MPOs have done a good job as far as inclusion and as far as looking at things from a regional point of view and also making sure that all forms of transportation are considered. Roy writes in, it seems like the government can't run Amtrak and turn a profit. Why not get out of the business if Amtrak can't survive in the competitive consumer market, shouldn't Amtrak go the way of every other failed private sector business? Well, Amtrak is funded uh, at about 40% federal funding. And last year, Amtrak made money. This year, Amtrak is making money. Ridership on Amtrak was way up last year. Amtrak on uh, this year, ridership is way up. I just took a train uh, last weekend from Washington to New York, Amtrak train from Washington to New York, completely full. Amtrak train coming back from New York to Washington, completely full. I believe Amtrak uh, on the Northeast Corridor and other places in the country is giving good service at a cost that people can afford. It's comfortable service. Uh, you can read newspapers. You can use your iPad, you can use your Blackberry, you can talk on the phone. If you want a quiet car on this corridor, in the Northeast Corridor, you can go to a quiet car and not listen to somebody else's phone conversation. Amtrak really gets it now. They do provide good service. And um, it, it, it is uh, supported by the federal government, by federal taxpayers. But it's not dissimilar to what federal taxpayers do to subsidize other forms of transportation. The bus system in your community, the streetcar system in your community has benefited from federal funding. The, the airports that you uh, drive in and out of and fly in and out of, supported by federal dollars. The idea that we give some federal subsidy to Amtrak is something that we do with a lot of different forms of transportation around the country. Uh, and then the rest of it obviously is subsidized uh, with uh, dollars that come from ridership or or other money that Amtrak has. I'm very happy that Amtrak now has good leadership providing good service at a cost that people can afford. Uh, and I, I believe that'll continue. Contech asks, 
How can rural communities in need of road and bridge repairs make improvements when local funding is not available? We have some very strong programs for rural America. We have very strong rural, pro uh, rural transit programs that allow for people to stay in their communities and yet have access to transit that can take them to a hospital, a doctor's appointment, to the grocery store, and they can still live in rural America. Uh, we think our transit programs have been very, very helpful to people. Um, we also use a, a lot of our uh, federal dollars for rural roads so that people that can drive have good roads to ride on. We have not ignored rural America when it comes to uh, really fixing up roads, providing transit, and making sure that people have good transportation, and we will continue to do that. We just uh, allocated uh, our third amount of money for our TIGER program, of which we received $500 million and 143 million had to go to rural America. So we have a strong commitment to rural America and always will and, and uh, will continue to make sure that roads and bridges are in state of good repair and that transit programs can be provided to, for people who uh, can't drive any longer or, or don't want to drive. Gail asks, how committed is DOT to the promotion of a national high-speed rail that will reduce our dependence on foreign oil and get people out of their cars. Well, we're, we're committed uh, to the tune of about $10 billion. Over the last uh, three years, President Obama's vision has been to create high-speed rail corridors in America. We have one in the Northeast, excuse me, in the Northwest. We have one in California. We have one in the Midwest that includes several states such as Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, we have one uh, also on the Northeast Corridor that runs all the way along the Northeast Corridor and will include states like North Carolina and, uh, and go even further north all the way to the Canadian border. We, under President Obama's vision, we have made a strong commitment to high-speed rail. Now, some people have been critics, but we are not going to be dissuaded. The President's vision will not be dissuaded uh, by the naysayers. High-speed rail is coming to America. Anyone that's ridden the trains in Europe and Asia comes back and would like to have that same kind of transportation here in America. So we're just beginning. We're right at the place where the country was at when the interstate system was started. We don't know where all the train tracks are going to be. We don't know where all the money's going to come from. But we have a plan to connect 80% of America in the next 25 years. And we're committed to that. The president's committed to it. And a lot of people in America are looking for passenger rail to come to their communities. Well, that's all we've got for today. Thanks again for all the great questions. And keep writing in on Fastlane, Facebook, and Twitter. So until next time, have a blessed holiday and also a very safe holiday.